Tamil Nadu Slum Clearance Board was established in 1971 by the then DMK government. The board constructed concrete tenements for the poor in Chennai and the party earned the support of the urban masses. But over the past two decades, slum dwellers have been forcefully evicted and moved to large slum resettlement colonies in the suburbs such as Kannaginagar and Perumbakkam. In a manner that le- legitimizes this existing practice of eviction, a policy for resettlement is initiated by the present DMK government. Does this mean that DMK has drifted away from its pro-urban poor housing stance? Let's see. In 1970s, DMK came up with this uh, Tamil Nadu slum clearance board policy, which is quite revolutionary compared to the uh, uh, rest of the country, right? But that was also used as a political vehicle. See, they had a plan that within seven years, they should uh, uh, be building uh, tenements in all the slums in Chennai. That was their plan. But if you look at in those seven years, I think they built around like 15,000 tenements or so. Just that. Because it was just a political vehicle. And of course, there are problems of whether you have funding to do. There are other macroeconomic issues that the government needs to be uh, thinking about, like whether we have enough funding to construct such huge housing projects, etc. But uh, in 1990s, things have completely changed, as I've already said. And this is not something that I would uh, particularly uh, attach to a DMK per se. I think this was the case with uh, most of the governments throughout India, both national and state, that they followed neoliberal policy. And they just did not follow it because they liked it. I think they were forced to follow neoliberal policy. See, this is a case like, uh, as I said, there is a huge competition between the cities to attract capital. So if Chennai is not going to follow the suit, then Chennai is going to be left behind. So you cannot be a player uh, who's not going to play in the game. So the, there is some kind of for, the, there is some kind of a coercion uh, that forces the government itself to follow such neoliberal policies. And World Bank and IMF, they directly intervened in those policies and they came up with huge money. And of course, the central government came up with uh, JNNURM, Jawaharlal Nehru Urban Renewal Mission. And their idea was also sites and settlements. They did not have institute development in that policy. I think now the government has come up with this resettlement and rehabilitation policy without... uh, Uh, attaching any sinister intentions to this policy, I think the reason they have come up with this is that uh, this is not something that matters only to Chennai. If you look at the DMK's budget, the last budget, they say that uh, they are going to come up with several uh, industrial parks uh, and information technology parks all over Tamil Nadu, particularly in the southern Tamil Nadu. And it means that there's going to be a series of eviction that's going to happen in cities like Coimbatore, Trichy, Tutukudi, such places, right? So they need to have a policy in place if they have to uh, have this kind of evictions throughout Tamil Nadu, of course, uh, within Chennai too. If they're going to do that, they need to have a policy. I think that's why they have come up with this policy. In the recent Tamil Nadu budget session, The announcement of formulating a policy on resettlement and rehabilitation was made. The draft of the same was released in the public domain on October 12th to invite feedback from all stakeholders. Stakeholders were given only two weeks to provide their feedback. After some criticism, it was extended by another week. The policy was initially released only in English and after it raised some eyebrows, it was brought out in Tamil as well. Kishore says, though a policy for resettlement is a welcome move, there are many aspects in the draft that are not friendly towards the urban poor. If the present DNK government have to continue at least the ideals of the 1970s DNK, which was in some sense protecting the urban poor, because they were also their vote bank, if at all it has to follow something that, uh, that was there in the 1970s kind of DNK, which was not completely neoliberal, uh, then they have to allow people to comment on this policy and take those comments so seriously. But this uh, earlier they said it's only 15 days. 
now they have said uh, uh, till november 3 that's like extending it to a week but that is not enough as i said that's a 17 page document it's a quite technical document it, it is a document only uh, people who are academics or people who are already involved in this can read and understand it's not a document that any see generally any government document is not something a layman can read and understand right so so who needs to comment on this is not academics journalists and social activists people who needs to comment on this is the affected population the people who are living in the slums and people who are living in uh, the resettlement colonies like anaganagar and terbakam they have to give their experience so if you have to take this document to the people and uh, allow them to uh, understand this and then comment this then it is a process which is which takes much more than a period of a one month this is not even one month this is just 21 days at least the government should uh, keep this open for 6 months so that uh, people can comment on this and there are two other things that this document has completely undermined i think they are quite important the first thing is the uh, this document has completely undermined 74th amendment see if you look at the discourse in general in social sciences as well as in politics people have always talked about the 73rd amendment like gram panchayats providing power to the local bodies but always the 74th amendment is not at all discussed which is providing power to the urban local bodies and there is a reason to that the urban local bodies are not at all included in most of the uh, process is that uh, the provincial state have complete control over the urban centers and do not allow the urban local bodies to exert their power because uh, because urban local body representatives can be easily reached by the people they will be living in the same locality they can be easily questioned so if you look at this document uh, the councillors the elected councillors elected urban uh, local body representatives do not have any role so what i say is that this document have to be rewritten where the urban local body representatives have a role to play in all the three stages of the process during pre resettlement during resettlement post resettlement pre resettlement uh, urban local body representative should be there to question and also represent the uh, uh, views of the people and post resettlement urban local body representative should be there in order to fulfill the promises that are being set by the government so that the people can reach the uh, urban local body representatives and the second thing over here is that uh, the authorities who is going to uh, decide whether a place uh, whether a certain people should be evicted or not uh, that decision is taken only by the uh, government bureaucrats they have the development agencies you have the implement authority board etc and all these people are mostly yes men right the yes men they are going to say that uh, okay if the government says this needs to be evicted yes yeah, this needs to be evicted there is no uh, agency for the people there is no agency for the social activists who can question that uh, uh, decision who can argue against the decision so there is no room for discussion at all in this policy over the decision of eviction once a decision of eviction is made it is made there is no uh, 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 you can only contest that in court and we always know how the court functions and particularly against the urban poor and finally they have two committees uh, they have three committees but i am particularly concerned about the last two one is at the chennai level and the other one is at district level other districts in chennai level committee uh, the chennai corporation commissioner will be the chairperson in other districts the a district collector will be the chairperson but if you look at that uh, uh, committee it has a representation from every government department which is good because we need to have that kind of interdepartmental coordination but if you look at people's representation there are only two one is representation from the non gom uh, ngos non government organization one per- one person one member and the second is uh, uh two members from residential welfare association see to start with ngos if you look at in the neoliberal era 
mostly the ngos has played the role of smoothening the eviction process uh, somebody like mike davis who worked on uh, uh, urban question a lot in his planet of slums clearly mentions how ngo has played the smoothening role in latin america and africa ngos will go to the uh, uh, urban uh, poor region they will go to the slum dwellers and they will act as some kind of a liaison between the government and the people and they will kind of uh, 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 sweet talk them and then smoothen the process so that is not ngo we want we want a, a ngo uh, which will actually advocate for the people and there are very few ngos like that one ngo that i can mention is information resource center for deprived urban communities in uh, uh, chennai we have hyderabad urban lab in hyderabad we have uh, pukar in uh, uh, mumbai there are several such ngos but we do not know which ngo will be selected so that is a process that needs to be question the second is residential welfare association which residential welfare association will be included will the residential welfare association uh, members be from the slum regions from the people who are being affected or will we have residential welfare association which are there in really upscale regions in the centers like for instance will it be from boat club will it be from besan nagar or will it be from the slum population because if it's going to be from the uh, 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 from the upper middle class or the upper class region their only objective is to clear the people from the regions uh, from the uh, uh, as from the squatter settlements right that is that is their only agenda so who will be there so these are the questions that needs to be addressed if there are so many points in the draft policy that require to be reconsidered then what should be the way forward in my opinion is more exclusionary than inclusionary this document is more about eviction than about rehabilitation if it has to be anything that uh, that will resemble the dmk of 1970s which came up uh, which 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 also uh, came out of some kind of aspiration uh, of uh, uplifting the poor uplifting the lower caste because it had a huge uh, it, it had a quite a great uh, dravidian lineage starting from periyar and it had a great support from the left if you see in several of the policies left has been with the uh, dravidian movement throughout so if it if it has to be anything of that then they have to really extend the time and ask questions from several stakeholders and include that and i think they have to rewrite this policy the policy that it is there right now it is quite clearly against the uh, well being of the poor against the well being of the slum dwellers and it is something that is there to serve the upper class and particularly which is it, it's something that will the government will try to woo the foreign capital uh, into the city i think that's what this and i think that's where uh, in uh, in the economic sense uh, that's where the dmk is moving you can see dmk does two things one is uh, uh, they implement the new liberal agenda uh, to the finest details but they also safeguard themselves by providing some kind of uh, welfare policies it might be tv it might be free bus ride for women uh, such policies will also come up it's like basically uh, another kind of a smoothening process there's going to be the neoliberal economic policies that will be implemented but we will also uh, kind of like assuage a pain of that by providing welfare policies i think that's where the dmk government is different from the congress in the national uh, government when it was there or it is different from bjp or it is even different from the governments of chandra babu naidu and others their their motto was only implementing new liberal policies the welfare took a, a they really did not concentrate so much on that but the dmk will have its foot on both sides uh, but in the long run it will not help the poor